Mr. Baptist, Dr. J. Robert Bradley, is one of the greatest and most influential voices you've probably never heard of. Born in Memphis, Tennessee in 1919, he was discovered by composer and singer Lucy Campbell, who recognized his talent and immediately threw him into voice lessons. Bradley would eventually train and make a living as a bass baritone in Europe before returning to the United States to sing gospel. Black religious music around Bradley's time heavily favored middle and low range voices. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my Songs such as Motherless Child, Go Down Moses, and Pilgrim of Sorrow were all songs associated with lower voices such as Paul Robeson and Marian Anderson. These are songs that are also in Bradley's religious repertoire. This sharing of repertoire with classical singers is an instance of the overlap between the gospel and classical music. A hallmark of Bradley's style was his infusion of his classical training with the stylings of gospel music. One of the first things you'll notice when Bradley sings is his posture. Looking at operatic bass baritone Simon Estes in comparison with Dr. J. Robert Bradley, you'll notice they stand almost exactly the same. This posture keeps the body in alignment, allowing nothing to get in the way of the sound. When singing, you want to be as free and as relaxed as possible. A free and even vibrato is an indicator of a relaxed voice. But something you'll notice in singers with very large voices is when they are singing completely free and completely open, the tongue will also vibrate. We can see this in Estes. And we can also see this with Bradley. You got to know. Looking at their mouths, you'll also notice their mouth positions are almost identical. Drop jaw, forward lips, and a raised soft palate. For a classical singer like Estes, these things keep the vocal tract open and elongated, allowing his voice to fill theaters without a microphone. These techniques are helpful for Bradley because gospel is about producing big sounds, sometimes over massive choirs and loud instrumentation. Oh, on honey. Bradley showcases his mastery of blending the classical and gospel techniques and his ability to alternate between a covered and open chest sound. Covering the voice originates from the historic Italian school of singing, emphasizing a well-balanced resonance or timbre throughout the entire singing range. The chest voice can be sung two different ways, open or covered. Here, Pavarotti demonstrates the difference between an uncovered and a covered sound. You can start. I suspect a strangle, eh? <laughs> if you do. When Pavarotti sings opened or uncovered, you'll notice that the lips and mouth spread horizontally. You can start. An open or uncovered chest sound like this is how you get the calling out or shouting effect that is generally associated with gospel music. You'll hear Jay use this open or uncovered sound on gospel shouts such as hallelujah or yes. Pavarotti 
Unity covers the sound, you'll notice the lips and mouth shape are more vertical, resulting in the sound being more forward and projected. When Jay sings the first love, you'll notice the mouth is more spread out horizontally. When he does it again, you'll hear that the love now sounds closer to the word law, and you'll notice the mouth positioning is more vertical. That is a covering of the sound. When he does this phrase together, you'll notice he goes from a covered sound to an open, uncovered chest sound on the word body. He opens up and you'll notice his lips and mouth spread horizontally, causing the tonal quality of the note to change. To compare Jay covering the voice to a classical singer, here's Estes doing the same thing. Sometimes I Throughout this video, You'll notice a lot of comparison has been made between operatic bass baritone, Simon Estes, and Dr. J. Robert Bradley. And it's because they both sang the same classical and spiritual repertoire. And also, they trained as the same voice type, a bass baritone. baritone is a voice type that sits between baritone and bass. Some literature will refer to this as a basso cantate, meaning a lighter bass. Some literature will call this a helden baritone, meaning the heaviest and lowest baritone. This variation in terms also highlights another discussion of how different words are used to describe the same thing. But looking at this chart of vocal ranges, you'll see that the bass baritone sits about a tone higher than the bass and a tone lower than the baritone. And looking at this chart here, you'll see that the basso cantate or low baritones best produced notes are between E and the third octave and E and the fourth octave. I want to rest, I want to rest from my journey. Referring back to our vocal range chart, it lists the bass baritone's primary singing range as around G in the second octave to F in the fourth octave. All the Bible tells me so. Bradley has many low G's, and the F is his favorite high note. Sometimes I entire vocal range is bass E to high A flat, with his central singing range being between low F sharp to F. So you can see that his voice literally sits between two categories. Do you want to call him a high bass or a low baritone? Whatever you want to call him, 
Outside of two and a half albums, there is very little recorded material of Bradley, as he was busy being the director of music for the National Baptist Convention. Assuming the role after the passing of his mentor, Dr. Lucy Campbell. People often wonder, how did gospel music breed such excellent musicians and vocal technicians? Well, it's because people like Bradley and Campbell were in charge of not just the music, but building voices. Their work is a testament to the interconnectedness between the worlds of gospel and classical music, but also the importance of the church as a place for music education. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Until next time. What? Nah.